everyone and welcome to day three of National Intern Week. Welcome as well. I'm your host, Andy, from Career Map TV. And today we are joined by the team at Jaguar Land Rover, or JLR if you would like, to discuss their um, exceptional placements and talk about ins and outs of working with JLR and what it's like to be part of JLR team. Remember, this session will be recorded, so if you do miss anything, don't worry. It'll be up on our YouTube and our website in the coming days. Um, there's also Q&A at the very end of the session. So if you want to just leave your questions in the chat and Q&A box off to the right, and we will come back to them at the very end of the session. So without further ado, I'll pass on to the JLR team to commence with their session. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. And thank you for joining us. We're going to talk to you today about our undergraduate placements in particular uh, in the spirit of National Intern Week. So we'll tell you a little bit about the uh, sort of what an undergrad placement is, first of all, and then a little bit about JLR as well. The placements that we offer, you'll have the chance to hear from some of our current people that are actually on a placement with us too. So you can start to understand their experiences and what they get up to and ask some questions as well. And then we'll give you a little bit of insight into our application process and hopefully some tips and information that you can take away. Um, and that should hopefully help with your applications, whether that is to us at JLR or whether that's anywhere else as well. So just to, I guess, to start with the actual theme of our campaign this year is this arrive as you are, achieve the exceptional. And that theme is very much around we want you to feel like your authentic self and we really value all of the different individuals and diverse people that we have in the organization and we want you to be able to arrive to jlr as the person that you are and we we will help you develop your skills develop your knowledge and your expertise through the various whether you're doing you know a placement whether you're doing a graduate program whatever it might be we'll help you develop that knowledge and help achieve the exceptional with us so I'm just going to start with a couple of poll questions. Um, the top two, because they're open text, we'll just use the chat function. It'd be really good just to see what universities you're from today and what courses you're studying. So if you could just use the chat and just pop in the university that you're at and the course that you're on. And we'll just give that 30 seconds and see what responses come through. We'll just weigh on a couple of responses into the chat. So we've got Manchester Uni, that's where we're currently based. I don't know if you can tell from the backdrop slightly. <laughs> and we've got Southampton, Coventry, Sheffield, and quite a few different courses as well coming through. Really good to see such a, a diverse group of people as well. Um, so many different courses, universities, really great to have you all on the session today. The next two questions should come through as polls, hopefully on your laptop or phone that you're on. Um, so I'm just gonna start them very quickly. This first one is just asking how likely you are actually to do a placement year. And if it's something you're thinking about, something that you don't think you wanna do, or if it's something you definitely wanna do and you're, you're here today to find out about our opportunities and get some help along the way. So I'll, uh, I'm just gonna activate that poll. Hopefully you can see that. We've got some definitely's and some thinking about it's already coming in. That's really good. Yeah, lots, so lots of people are interested in doing a placement, which is always useful. I should have started, to be fair, by introducing myself. Um, so I'm Sam Parkin, and I lead on our university engagement at Jaguar Land Rover. So everything to do with the recruitment of our graduate and undergraduate programs falls into my remit. And I also lead on the campaign as well. So the things that you see on the website at the moment and all the exciting new information, uh, I'm also leading it there too. Um, I actually did an undergraduate placement myself. So I did a placement in that HR function after doing a business management degree. And as part of my placement, uh, when I finished it, I got to actually come back and do the graduate scheme. So very much I've been in your shoes a few years ago. Um, so you'll, hopefully you'll be there soon, but I've very much been where you are and we'll share a bit more of my experience and a bit more about JLR as well as we go. So I'm just gonna end that poll. Uh, and then the final question is, 
how confident do you feel at the moment in applying for placements or internship roles? So I've just started that one. So we've got some limited confidence coming through. Um, a couple of people are confident, so that's, that's good to see. A couple are very confident as well, so that's always nice. Hopefully, as part of this webinar, we'll be able to improve that confidence for those that are um, perhaps limited in confidence or somewhat confident. Hopefully, we can bump it up a little bit in the next hour or so. So I'll end that poll and we will crack on with some of the slides. So just to give you a bit of information about JLR, if you don't know us already from those letters, it actually stands for Jaguar Land Rover. It's always it's quite interesting. We've just um, undergone quite a big rebrand. So for years, we've been telling employees, make sure you say Jaguar Land Rover, not JLR. And now it's completely flipped. And it's please don't say Jaguar Land Rover. We are JLR. So the brand has basically changed. And this is in line with the change in the company, how we're moving towards more of a modern luxury future for, uh, for the vehicles that we create and for the most discerning of clients that we service. Um, it's reflective of the sort of technology first company that we feel like we're becoming as well. And, and all of those changes have combined into us shaping the, the narrative of the brand in a bit of a different way. So at JLR, we're a global company. We've got offices in various different countries. Some of those are uh, manufacturing based um, areas. And in the UK, for example, we have a lot of graduate programs that will, some will work in the manufacturing sites, some will work in more corporate sites. You can see a little map on screen. Um, a lot of our roles will be West Midlands based. So in sort of Gaydon, which is like in Warwickshire, um, Whitley, which is Coventry and a couple of other plants. We've also got some roles, though, in Liverpool and Manchester. Manchester is where I am today. Um, it's a lovely office right in the city centre, which is always nice. So there are a few other different areas areas that you can work in as well and we do offer hybrid working so I know some people live in different areas um, and, and are able to commute to work a couple of times a week and lets them live further out I guess from those locations and JLR is a house of brands so if you don't know JLR or Jaguar Land Rover you might certainly know the cars that you can see on the screen so Range Rover, Defender, Discovery and Jaguar and those are really distinct global brands. You probably see them on the roads all the time. Those are the product lines that we create essentially. And at JLR, we're reimagining our future. So this slide shows you a kind of new global strategy that launched um, probably about 18 months ago now, but it's very much still the core strategy of JLR. And this is all about our reimagination of modern luxury, the experiences that we provide our customers. It's all about our move towards electrification as a brand and also things like automation, advancements in technology and things like that. We are, you know, we're launching Jaguar as a brand new all electric brand in 2025, which we've been saying for a couple of years now, but now that we're sort of towards the end of 2023, it feels like it's getting closer and closer, which is really exciting. And some of our other nameplates will be in pure electric form as well by the end of the decade. So some really exciting things that we're working on as a company. And it's an exciting direction that we're going in as well as as well as the industry is. So it makes it a really great place to work. And it makes it, I feel, impactful. So the things that you do here and the products that you're working on are real and you see it as well so I know people that have worked on infotainment apps for example and that app has then been deployed across hundreds of thousands of vehicles and they can look back at that and say I did this which I think is really great I heard from someone once and it always rings true with me that there's a little bit of us in all of the cars and I think that that's really true so whether you do work in manufacturing actually working on the creation of those vehicles whether you're in engineering whether you're in design in that initial sketching of the vehicle or commercial HR wherever you might be there is a part of you in all the products that we create so we're just going to play a video now that introduces our new campaign Going to qualify. I'll be a qualified technician. I'll be qualified in what I always wanted to do. 
I mean, there's so much further for me to grow, but I've seen a massive change in like the way I am, the things that I've learned. I've been inspired by some great people. You know, there's some really inspirational people in JLR. want to push yourself there's nobody stopping you they are there to facilitate that development the most inspiring characteristic about someone is when they are themselves i have a world of possibilities here that's the good thing about jlr and that's what i'm excited about I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, apologies if the audio was slightly out of sync with the video. Um, hopefully it wasn't for you, but it looked a bit funny to me. Um, but that video is on our website and that's basically our sort of launch video for the new campaign, which is really exciting. So just to go into a bit of detail on actually what is an undergraduate placement, first of all. So typically they'll be for penultimate year students. So often it's when you're just going into your second year that you start to look for placements or if you're doing kind of like a, a four-year course, like an MENG, for example, then it can be in your second year, but sometimes it's often in your third year. Um, so it can vary. And those placements could be summer placements, short-term things in the summer typically, or they can be year-long placements. I should say at this point, all of our placements at JLR are year-long placements rather than summer. Um, so just to make that point, uh, make you aware of that point, what I would definitely say is if you are someone that's, thinking about summer placements and haven't given much consideration to a year-long one, then I definitely would. Again, whether that is with JLR or whether that's someone else, somewhere else, I really would consider a year-long placement because I think it often takes you enough time to actually get up to speed with a role before you then get to that point where you start to really make an impact and drive things. So I know for myself, I did the year-long placement and came away with a wealth of experience. And I think it's really valuable. Um, and yes, it extends your course a little bit. Um, obviously, there's some costs involved to so totally understand some of the, the difficulties. But if, if it's something you can do on your course and something that you're sort of able to facilitate, I definitely would recommend doing that four year because what you can get from it is really special. And also with a lot of placements, and this includes with us, if you do well on the placement, you can come back as a graduate, which is always really good. So when you get back to your final year and you've got your exams and your coursework and no doubt you want to go out and have a bit of fun as well, you can actually uh, not have to worry as much about all your applications and assessments and everything because you've got a role available to you to go back to once you've finished your final year. But they're really good placements to get industry insight and actually get real world experience. I don't know if you will feel the same as me or if you're completely different, but I didn't love university, to be honest. Um, I knew it was important because I knew that having the degree would help me in my future career, but I didn't love being there. But genuinely, when I came and did a placement and then I went back in my final year, I actually enjoyed it more because the theory I'd been learning started to make sense a bit more and it started to feel a bit more real. So they're really good for that to gain industry insights. To also to test the waters, you know, you might go into a career or an industry or a job that actually you don't love, and that's totally okay, but at least, you, at least you've had that chance to experience it on a placement that wasn't sort of a permanent thing, and it gives you an idea then to help shape your future as well. In terms of finding placements, so lots of different ways you can go about it. I think the big thing is to think about the degree that you're doing, first of all, and depending on that degree, probably depends on the types of doors that it unlocks. So, you know, if you're someone that's doing business management, then naturally there's probably a lot of different roles available to you in HR or marketing or finance or sales and, and various different areas like that. But you probably couldn't go into something like software engineering. So think about your degree, first of all, then think about what sort of roles might be available to you. And it also starts to think about the industries that you might want to work in and what companies are in those industries. So if you are, let's say, a software engineer, I would say that our industry in automotive is pretty exciting in terms of where it's going in the future. And then you might look in that industry and you might look at JLR, you might look at a Rolls Royce or somebody else, but you start to see those companies and then it helps you build almost like a portfolio of places that you might be interested in. Definitely use your career services as well. So 
they'll be happy to help and that's what they're employed for. So do speak to them, get some advice, have one-to-one sessions, maybe review CVs or prepare for assessment centres, whatever it might be. And also use websites such as CareerMap. They're really useful to you, but also things like Write My Placement, Brad Cracker are really good places to get information, as well as obviously the company website itself. That's going to be the best source of truth. And just do your research and prepare. So really make sure when you're applying that you've aligned your skills and your experiences to the actual role that you're applying for and that you've researched the company as well. And you understand its strategy, its direction and how that fits in with your ambitions and why you motivated to apply to the role. So just to give you a bit of information about our undergraduate programs. So as I said, they're all 12 months long. You'll need to be on track for a 2-2 or above in a relevant degree subject. You can see all of the roles on screen at the moment. Um, and if you go on the website afterwards, you'll be able to see the specific entry criteria and all of those kind of things. So we've got quite a lot of roles within our engineering space across things like software, electronics, hardware, mechatronics, um, future propulsion systems. So quite a few different roles on offer there. But we've also got roles in industrial operations, which is more of our manufacturing engineering side. We've got roles in creative, which is on more of the design front. Uh, commercial, which um, one of our volunteers will be able to talk more about their experiences in that area a little bit later on as well. Um, and also people, which is our HR function, essentially. Applications for most of our undergrad placements are already open. So the industrial operations and engineering ones are open right now and you could apply today. Uh, the other ones should open on the 2nd of October. So just, uh, just a week away, um, less than a week actually they will open as well um, and you'll be able to apply for those programs if you're interested. I think on the website you can register your interest right now for the ones that aren't open and you'll get notified when they do. And the salary at the moment for the undergrad placement is £21,377. That's for 37 hours of work. So you can actually opt into what's called the increased working week, which bumps you up to a 40 hour week, which is pretty standard anyway. And you get an extra 8.1% on that. So although it says your salary is 21,377, you're actually earning more like sort of 23,500, something like that. Um, and then I'm not going to go through all these, but these are just to outline some of those entry criteria for our undergraduate placement. So as you can see, you know, if you're doing like electronics, for example, then we're going to expect a degree that's in that sort of field, computer science, electrics, electronic systems, software engineering, something like that. So you can see them on there. But again, when you go into any role on our website, you'll see this information for the relevant role. I'm just going to play you into the video now that gives you a bit of insight from one of our um, brilliant people that's currently on placement at the moment in uh, product engineering, electronics and complex systems. It's a really, really nice video. Coming to the UK, it was kind of a shock for me, um, especially like linguistically. People didn't believe like my skills just because I had a little bit of like difficulties, like speaking the language talking about the interview stage and everything. The whole process was very calm, very, you know, you're good, like trust yourself. The interview itself, like I remember her, she was like, don't feel pressured, like this is a conversation. She let me speak and she was like, okay, you have a voice here, like tell me what your skills are. Tell me what's made you passionate about coming to this role. And I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> like let me, let me, let me speak. <laughs> that was like the breakthrough. Often, like, I don't believe in myself. Oh, am I good enough? Do I have the skills? Do I have, like, what they want from me? But no one doubts me because I'm from Portugal or because I'm black. It was, it was just like the feeling of, I made it here. I would be proud of to say, look, mom, I'm here. It's the fact that people didn't expect me to come this far and it's the fact that I'm made into GLR. And not only that, but my future is bright. I'm seeing my product like being driven. I'm seeing the technology that people are using. And that's what makes me excited. I'm proud to be like in that company. I'm proud to like have built that product specifically and to have people say, it's a really good one. 
I have a world of possibilities here. I can explore multiple roles within this company. That's the good thing about JLR, and that's what I'm excited about. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. I think it's it's a really emotive one, actually. And uh, when we worked on the campaign, I remember us when we first saw it, a few people had some tears, I think, and it was very much exactly what we wanted to capture in this campaign. It's that real authenticity piece that JLR is a company that very much cares around about DNI and around inclusion. And I think that has improved in terms of the company culture it's improved so much in the last few years. And I've, I've seen that myself, having started here in 2016 as an undergrad and you know now being here in 2023. I've definitely seen that journey and that change and it, it's much better now than it was then. And it was good then, but it, it, it's much better now. And, and you can really feel that in some of the stories that are shared. And that's just one of the examples, but there's some other ones on the website if you want to check them out as well. So just a couple more slides from me before we hear from some of our people currently on placement. Um, just to talk to you about some brief benefits of doing an undergrad placement. This probably applies to most places, but specifically at JLR, um, you get to engage in a learning program. So you'll develop some core skills and obviously you're going to develop technical learning within the role that you're doing. That's going to help you on your placement. You'll work with industry experts. So you might be in a team with a graduate or an apprentice or someone that's been here four years or someone that's been here 40 years. And I think that that's really great because you get to learn from so many different people, but don't for one second think that they're not learning from you too, because that's really important. You're the person that's coming in with that fresh degree and that fresh university insight that we don't have right now. So very much we're looking to learn from you too. And as an undergraduate, you know, you'll be really delivering on crucial projects and actual real experiences. And I definitely felt that. And I think a, a common myth or misconception with undergrad placements is that you'll, you know, you'll be observing, you'll be watching, shadowing your manager, maybe like they'll just give you some boring tasks to do and that's all that you'll do. But you, at least at JLR, you, you definitely get stuck in, you get involved and you should get some really tangible things to come out with after you finish your 12 month placement with us. There's also a good um, community. I always think that our placements, grad schemes and apprenticeships are almost like an extension of university sometimes. Um, there's a really good community of people that are currently on programme and they run all sorts of different social events as well. So they've done ski trips in the past. They do like football and other sport things and Christmas parties, all sorts of stuff to get involved in. So I think that's quite a nice thing to do as well and it helps you ease in. And then just, I know I mentioned DNI a minute ago, it's super important to JLR. And these are just the example of some of the networks that we have in the business. So you can join these, any or all of these networks when you join JLR, um, whether you feel like your characteristics resonate with them or not, you can join them as a member, you could join as an ally, completely up to you. I know I'm part of quite a few of these groups and they do some really great things as well. Um, Again, I think it's something that's come on a lot when the networks start um, when the networks were in, in place when I started, they were kind of there as a place for like minded people to go and meet other people. But now they're very much driving business initiatives forward. And I know us, our new CEO is really, really keen on working with the network. So I've seen so much exposure from a DNI perspective of these networks and the CEO and board members have attended summits and conferences and talks and things with the network. And they're genuinely passionate about driving things forward in this space. I think JLR last week um, had its first global DNI summit as well, which again, it's a brand new thing. And it just really shows you the direction that the business is going in, which it makes it a great place to work overall. Now that's enough talk from me for a little bit. So I'm going to pass over to a couple of our current undergraduates just for them to give you a bit of insight and a bit of talk into actually what they do and how they found working here so far. So first going to pass over to Robert, who's actually in the room with me. So I'll tilt the camera a little bit. So I think it would be really useful to just first ask you about actually why you chose JLR. Uh, for me, so I grew up and I was always quite artistic and I always used to, um, the one thing I sort of defaulted towards was drawing cars. Um, this is when I was about seven years old. Um, so I've always been interested in the 
the engineering of cars and the designs of cars. Um, having said that, I'm now on a software undergraduate placement. Um, being around cars and being passionate about cars and um, the simplistic beauty of them, that's sort of what um, drove me towards JLR. And you mentioned you're on the uh, software engineering scheme at the moment. Yeah. Obviously, you joined that a couple of months ago now. So how are you finding it so far and what are you working on? I'm loving it. So the team I've been placed in is sort of data engineering, but we've been given um, a fair amount of responsibility already in the last three or four months. And we are, uh, my team specifically, we're already, or myself, I'm building tools that are, are being deployed and being used already um, and saving, saving people within the company time. So to know that I'm already having an impact is quite valuable to me. Brilliant. And obviously you chose to do a year on placement. I know a lot of people don't. What, what was it that made you actually choose to do a placement first of all? I think for most people, it's the, the, um, extra block on a CV. Um, but also for me, it was to gain confidence as a, a software developer. Um, often in university, there's people and you, you tend to doubt yourself because there's always, I'm sure there's a few on the call now who, um, you think that there's other students who they get better marks than you and they understand things more. Um, but being able to go into the workplace and trust yourself and learn that you have value to add um, in the workplace was a big, big draw for me. And do you think that that's going to help you, obviously, when you go back to your final year and in your future career, having this placement on the CV as such? Oh, massively. Um, yeah, I think at the end of the day, when when everyone leaves university, it's you got a first or you've got a 2-2 two, two or 2-1. Two, um, but I know that a lot of people, they ask you about your placements and what you've done in your placements and being able to have real industrial experience because it's 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 fairly different to university um, as similar as it is, it's just as different. So being being able to have that, um, that different factor about you and knowing how a workplace operates is quite invaluable. Cool. Um... Obviously, lots of students online at the moment. Is there a top tip, a particular thing that you would share with a student that's going to help them succeed in their application? I would say, um, just as you've been saying throughout this thing, just be yourself. Get get excited. Just as you become nervous, I was very nervous going through the application process. Um, but try and find a way to turn those those nerves into excitement and. Really, if, if JLR is something that excites you and aligns with the kind of person you are, um, then get excited to share that, you know, just be yourself and try and get that message across about how excited you are to have the opportunity to maybe be a part of the company. Amazing. Thank you. And for everyone that's on the call at the moment as well, if you want to ask any questions at all, please use the chat function. Um, we will have a hopefully at least 10 minutes of Q&A at the end of the session as well. So if you've got a generic question or a question for any of the specific people that you hear from today, please absolutely feel free to go ahead and ask it. So I move on to Jay now. See, you're also on the software undergraduate route. So wanted to ask you first, I guess, how did you find the application process at JLR? Surprisingly painless, um, which sounds uh, odd. I have a hearing difficulty and I'm also uh, autistic and I'm on, I'm on the spectrum, um, which means that it can be difficult for me to present the best version of myself uh, in meetings or presentations or, you know, uh, interviews. But I remember the two people that I spoke to and they were both so nice, so supportive. I was anxious and I told them, look, I'm autistic. I might not say things right. I might not do things right. And they were so patient. They repeated things. They clarified, um, rephrased stuff if I couldn't understand them. And the whole process was just like, they want to get the best that they can out of you and they want you to succeed. So I felt really supported during that process. That's really, really, really great to hear. And I think it's, it's super important as well. I know that we've just updated our guidance on the website about reasonable adjustments and things like that as well, because often people do have 
that whether it's a disability or something that just sometimes makes these application processes just a little bit harder for an individual sometimes people just don't share that information and it can make an application process really tough so I'm really glad that obviously when you came through that process and obviously you've been yeah. successful that you were able to get the support that you needed at the various stages as well so that's really good um why then obviously you probably applied for a number of different placements why did you apply for JLR and why did you choose JLR ultimately I've always been fascinated by complex things so cars and engineering I, I always watch those how it's made programs that were on mm -hmm. on like the discovery channel those were my bread and butter during the summer holidays I'd be glued to them um, and I've always been passionate about the idea of creating something that you see and you go I was part of that um, but specifically JLR because I saw the amount of support and the networks and the 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 work that gets put in to being able to bring your authentic self to work. Uh, I'm non-binary, I use they, them pronouns, and I know that that's not something I would feel comfortable to share in most businesses or most environments, but at JLR, I can bring who I am to work and I, you know, my pronouns are respected, my identity is just as valid, and that's really important to me. Um, and I felt that that was very important to me about where I work, so yeah. Amazing. That probably leads me on well to my next question. And so you've, and like Robert, you've, you've experienced JLR for uh, a bit over two months now. How have you found sort of the culture and, and, and the place to work itself in those two months? Every single person that I've spoken to has been so happy to help me. Um, and I'm not just saying that, like, I've been all, all around the business. I've been speaking to people from all different departments, all different like levels of management. So people who've been really quite high up in the management all the way to, to other uh, undergrads and apprentices. I've yet to find anyone who's been sort of dismissive or rude. It's been, there's no such thing as a stupid question. It's a really open, great culture for learning and improving, which is part of the reason I joined because it's like, you learn something new and you're constantly being pushed and, and you growing and changing. And I feel like that culture of bringing who you are to work allows you to feel that vulnerability to learn. Like it, it, it opens up an, a, a, a dialogue that means that we have a really positive feel, I think. Amazing. And obviously you're on the same program as Robert, but not everybody does the same job, that's for sure. So what are the types of things that you've been working on in your role? So I work in a department or a section called verification and validation, which is a lot of words to basically say quality control. If I want to put it in a more fun way, I take the hardware and the software that everyone has been working so, so hard to make, and then I attempt to set it on fire. Uh, <laughs> what we do is we run tests uh, that check that the hardware and the software do what they're supposed to do. And yes, sometimes those tests do actually involve the hardware catching on fire. Um, <laughs> hopefully not too often. Um, but the, the purpose of what I do is to make sure that what we're making is the highest quality. And I really enjoy it. Uh, I'm constantly working with all kinds of different people, as I mentioned. Um, from you know the developers who are the ones making the software to the people who are maintaining the um, test facilities that we use you know that there's a lot of communication and collaboration that goes on to, to make sure that these things are made and work properly and yes some of it some of it is setting things on fire for just a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and what would you say has been your favorite moment at JLR so far or maybe favorite day that's difficult because there's been quite a few that I've been like the first day when you step in on because I work in the uh, Gaiden site when I first walked out onto there's this absolutely massive uh, indoor space and it feels almost like a like a an airport and I was being taken to my desk and being like this is real this is where I'm gonna work this is crazy um, and then just sort of getting stuck into learning and being you know 
uh, I ended up with mentoring and just seeing all of the different parts of the departments and all the different things, for lack of a better word, that go into making what we do a possibility. Like, mm -hmm. it's just crazy. And final question, what's your top tip that you would share with everybody that's on the webinar today? Well, Rob has sort of nicked mine, which was, you know, being yourself. But um, I think it's important to remember that the interviewers aren't your enemy. They want you to succeed. They want you to be able to present the information. They want you to be able to show the best of yourself. So being a bit open with them, like I did in my uh, my interview when I was I acknowledged my diversity and various other assorted blah, 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 various other assorted things. Um, being aware that they are really just trying to make sure that you have the opportunity to shine. They're really nice people, I promise. Um, and yeah, good luck. <laughs> Brilliant there, thank you. And thank you for giving such a, a personal insight as well. I think it, it really helps. And I'm, I'm sure there's other people that are on the, uh, on the webinar today that have perhaps had some of the experiences that you have or have some of the, um, the same things they might need accommodation for. So I think that, that it's really great that you've been so open. Thank you. So I'm going to move on to our, our final participant of the day, which is Abby. Now, you're obviously in a bit of a different area, so you're in commercial. Why don't we start by actually, if you can introduce sort of what is commercial, what do they do on a typical day today? That is a very difficult question. Um, commercial is everything that's not like engineer. Anything that hasn't got a role is in commercial. So it's like the front face of the business basically it's um internal communications um it's any marketing pr um there's so many different like functions within commercial um i'm just in a tiny bit i couldn't even tell you half of what people do within commercial it was it was a difficult question i'm not one i pre-warned you about so sorry about that one um, so what do you do at the moment obviously you're in commercial again you've just started a couple of months ago what's your specific area so i'm in the global social team um so that's the social media um it's a really interesting team to be a part of at the minute because they're like obviously following the new rebranding strategy splitting out into the brands instead of just one JLR and um, so it's like finding a voice for each brand that differentiates it from all the rest and it's great how much input I have even though I'm only here for 12 months on that which is going to be with it with the business for so much time um, and there's so much variety in the roles that I do within my team from the pre-production so um organizing the shoots getting cars accom um, location accommodation to the actual shoot itself um then all of the edits and post-production that goes in then analyzing it after seeing how successful it was how many people engaged with it then learning from that what we can do next time um so it's great that like every day is different um and it's a really practical role that you really have to get stuck in um and you can be here there and everywhere like i'm in london most like maybe like t once every two weeks and you attend shoots you know as an undergrad we can actually go to the shoots where they take the pictures and take the videos for the social media and it's so interesting just seeing photographers and like creatively minded people just bounce off each other and it's like chaos but it creates like a masterpiece at the end i love it honestly that sounds sounds like a super exciting area and i think as well our, you know you can tell with our social media since the sort of rebrand as well things have definitely changed and i think it looks exceptional and it's stylish and attractive and i know we've you know we've just done a campaign haven't we with kano for example for the defender um, I think sponsored the Rugby World Cup recently as well. So there's, there's always different exciting activations as well. And I'm, hopefully you've been part of some of those and you've yeah. seen all sorts of different things as part of your role. 
yeah it's really good and you know taking on that modern luxury now everything is scrutinized and it has to be the best standard um, and we have to be the best of the best because we want to compare ourselves with like Louis Vuitton and other really like luxury brands so we need to be at the top of our game yeah I think that that's what's so exciting is there's there's always change and there's always opportunity at JLR and I've, I've definitely experienced that throughout my time here and that's what's so great about joining, you know, at this time, but it'll be, I'm sure there'll be something, <clears throat> there'll be something else next year as well. It's getting to work on those real projects and those real exciting things that, you know, like you said, you're going to do your 12 months and you'll be able to look back and hopefully have some really tangible things there and say, I was involved in that and, and you know, it will still stand strong for years to come. So it's super exciting. But what, so what made you choose JLR in the first place? Um, so originally I had experience with working with luxury companies so I kind of liked the way they presented themselves and for me it, I'm more interested in the external communication and how the brand presents itself to the customers rather than to its employees and I found that to be a really exciting place within luxury brands so that's what drew me specifically to JLR. I'm not a huge like petrol head I mean like my dad sorts all of my car stuff out like I don't know anything about cars but I do like Formula One so that's why I kind of chose a car company um for my slight interest in motorsport and um the stuff they do with like Jag racing and that's really exciting um and then it was mainly because I didn't want to join a company that didn't have an established placement scheme and JLR takes on so many undergrads and grads and um, you can tell that they have such an established like early career section who will support you throughout the journey they can like help make sure like if you were in a situation where you weren't getting any jobs to do and you were just sitting around which i haven't heard of but if that was the case they would definitely have some impact into getting you more involved and like if you were to join a smaller company they might not have that in the background helping you um so that was mainly why i chose jlr yeah definitely early careers has been going for such a long time which is great um obviously i started on there many others have done it in the past i think um adrian our ceo started as an apprentice way back when so it's it shows you doesn't it it shows you that those schemes are good it shows you they've been running a long time and they're respected and i think like you say, it helps because you know that it's it must be done well if it's been done for a while and people have got to the places that they are by going through those schemes. What in terms of obviously just choosing your placement and doing taking that year out and, and actually doing that whole year placement, why did you choose to do that and, and what do you think the benefits are? I think for me, just seeing how many people is on my course at uni is like there's so much competition to get like a job at the end of it. Like everybody is want, wanting to get a job realistically. You need to find something that gives you that uni USP, that you know unique selling point that differentiates you from everyone else. And like only about half of my year did a placement. So that gives me that step up on everyone else because I've had that year of experience and I really just wanted to take that stepping stone to my future career and a grad scheme so that was kind of the main driver but I think that would be the same for most people but then I also wanted to experience a corporate environment I think for most people my age their only experience of work would be like retail and hospitality which is very different to working in an office and um I think it just Gave, like I wanted to get that insight into what working in like a corporate environment would be like and I didn't really know what I wanted to do in my career and joining a commercial placement gives you so much opportunity to even like jump around within roles and shadow different teams so I could really find out what I enjoy and what I want to do with my life um, with only taking a year up instead of committing to a job staying there for ages and not liking it at least now I've got a little bit of knowledge of where I want to go yeah no I totally agree with everything you've said and I think 
judging just off last year's applications, one in 10 applications that we had was for an undergrad placement rather than a graduate one. So like you said, everyone does their degree and then wants to go into the working world and find a graduate role. But it's actually so much more competitive. You know, you compete with everyone that's graduated that year and there's various different courses, whether it's uh, Masters Incorporated or not. You're also competing with people that may have graduated a year ago, two years, three years, four years, etc. Even 20 years ago, people go back and do grad schemes in different fields, master students, everyone else. Whereas an undergrad placement, you can only compete with the people that are eligible in the relevant year. So just naturally, the pool of people that you compete against is smaller. Um, and like I said, you know, we had a lot less applications for undergrad compared to grad, but it can end up getting either graduate roles. So then when you go back to your final year, you haven't even got to worry about all of that, which I think is, is really great and, and definitely helps you. It's just a final point. What's your top tip that you'd give to everybody on the webinar? Um, uh, I'd just say like the undergraduate placement is still hugely competitive. So from that, you need to show off and like take the interview as your opportunity to just have half an hour just showing off about why you're amazing and what experience you've got that others don't have why you're special and why you should have the job and just to show passion and um, because realistically you might not have the skills but if you're really passionate about it you know why you're amazing then they're more likely to like have confidence in your confidence oh, that's brilliant totally agree Thank you to the three of you. Um, and as I said, please, I've seen some good questions come through already, but if you've got any questions specifically for anybody, then please feel free to shout them out. And uh, I'll talk for a couple of minutes now just about our application process, but I'll whiz through so we can get some good time for Q&A. So just to talk to you about that process, there's three stages. It's all virtual online, um, and then you get your offer. So it's an online application. It's online psychometric testing, a virtual assessment center, and then an offer. Just to break it down a little bit, um, with the application process, you don't need a CV and you don't need a cover letter to apply to us, which might save you some valuable time. It's all about our application form. And the big part of that is your motivation. So we're looking for why, what about the role excites you? Why do you want to join JLR? So some of the stuff that Abby's just mentioned there in terms of selling yourself and your passion is really, really important in this stage. We then come to online testing. So there'll be three different tests. The aptitude or cognitive type assessments are your pretty standard psychometric tests like verbal and numerical reasoning. So it might be a here's a sequence of numbers, what's the next number type of thing. Um, it's stuff like that, basically. There are practice tests on the website as well, which I'll come on to in a second. There's a match 6.5 personality test, which isn't as scary as it sounds. We don't care if you're an introvert or an extrovert. It's not looking to screen you on anything like that. It's more about how you align to our company values. And then there's a situational judgment test, which is you being presented with a situation that you might face in the role that you're going into. And it's about how you'd react to that. So for some of those questions, it's not kind of right or wrong as such, but it's seeing how you would deal with the situation. Then you come to our assessment center. So there's a presentation. Um, you'll get the topic two weeks beforehand when you get the invite to the assessment. And it's just usually it's a general business topic. It's three or four slides, 10 minute presentation and 20 minutes Q and A. So it's, it's not as scary as it sounds again, um, but make sure you research and really prepare, bring some stats, bring some company information into that presentation and you'll be just fine. And then, sorry, I didn't have not change the, the title on this one, um, but it's meant to be the interview. So with the interview, um, there'll be a bit about your motivation. So again, building on that application, that real, you know, why do you want to join us and what motivates you to work here? And then it will be behavioral questions, which are essentially competency-based questions. So we will outline our creator's code, which is what our customer values is. Um, that's on this slide we'll outline these things. So we might say to you, for example, one of our values is unity, and this is all about how we work as one. With that in mind, tell me about a time that you've worked effectively in a team, something like that. So those experiences, you know, we especially applying to undergrad placements, but also grad roles, 
we do not expect you to have tons and tons of experience on your CV. And particularly in industries like software engineering, for example, you're not going to go and be a software engineer on a Saturday working a four hour shift as you might in Primark or McDonald's or somewhere like that. So we don't expect heaps of experience. What we're looking for is the academic knowledge that you'll have from the relevant degree that you're studying. And then we're looking for that soft skills piece, that knowledge and experience, whether that is from a university project, whether it's from Saturday work, wherever that may be, whether it's from volunteering, extracurricular activities, whatever you get involved in is experiences. And that's the things that we're looking for. So teamwork, your leadership, your communication, your problem solving, all of those things are important to, to work anywhere and to work in any of our roles. And that's the type of thing that we will more likely assess in these types of questions. And then once you've done that, you get your offer. It's worth shouting out our new employability hub. So I've led the campaign for the last couple of years now. Um, and with this campaign that we've just recently launched, I was really keen to help more. And last year we just had our application process on the website and it didn't really give you much information. And I always get asked, you know, what's your, what's your top tip? What would you do about this? So I wanted to put it down somewhere that everyone could see. So we've just launched an employability hub because we're invested in you and we really want to help you to be able to secure your dream job. So you can scan that to find out more or you can just go onto the website and it's on there at the moment. It's got loads of information. So it breaks down that application process in a bit more detail. It has tips for every single stage before you apply, when you're applying, when you need to get to testing, etc. So tips throughout. It's got all of our values and some things about how you can build some of those skills as well. So there's tons of stuff on there. There's some other videos as well. Um, so lots to see and definitely check it out again. Whether that helps you to apply to us or somewhere else, I think that you'll find it quite useful. And you can stay up to date with us by following our social media channels. So here's a snippet of them. I think Instagram and LinkedIn are probably your best bet to get the best information. Um, but also uh, you can follow our YouTube channel and that's where the, the video I showed you earlier was hosted, but also there's some other videos as well on there. So feel free to check those out. I just want to launch into a, a poll question now. We'll skip the first one that's on screen right now, but let's just go back into the confidence one and just ask at this point now, how confident you feel about applying for roles? So just launch that and then we're going to move into a Q and A. So I'm seeing a very confident come through, which is always good. It means that it must have worked a bit. I'm seeing uh, somewhat confident as well. So yeah, a few more coming through at the, the top two areas, which is always good. So ho hopefully this webinar has been useful to give you a bit more information about us, but also some general tips and guidance that you can take away. Conscious of time, we've got eight minutes left. So more than happy to launch into some Q&A now for me or any of the other panelists today. Yes, uh, we will hop right into it. We have quite a few questions to get through in the time we have, so I'll be quick. Um, there's a question from Max. What percentage of people stay on at JLR after finishing their program? A lot of them. Um, mm -hmm. uh, from an undergrad perspective, obviously, if people don't want to come back, they don't stay on. If you haven't um, completed your placement successfully, there's the odd person here and there that doesn't, but pretty much everyone does. So it's honestly, it's about 90%, 95% that come back from undergraduate to graduate, which is really good. Um, and then graduate, I don't know what the figure is. I do know a lot of people do stay on and also from a progression point of view. I know, for example, in my cohort that did the grad scheme 2018 to 2020, by 2023, three of the six have been promoted once and th the other three have been promoted twice. So people, and they're all still here. So people do stay, I find. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. I know because uh, the average is around 80% for most internships, apprenticeships for sent on for part of the program. So 90% is very good for JLR. Uh, Usman says, are there any opportunities for international placements or exchanges within JLR's undergraduate programs? Um, exchanges is something that I think is going to be thought about more in the future. So 
I know that more and more of our other hiring areas are hiring graduate students, for example. Um, so India, I think, have just welcomed 80 people. I think Brazil have taken interns. Um, China have taken graduates before. So it's something that I think is on the cards. Um, it's not, I wouldn't want to promise you, you know, you'll come on our placement and you'll, you'll definitely do international rotations of experience because that's not the program. However, there are people that have. I know people in my function that have gone out. I know engineers that have gone and done stuff abroad. I know in commercial that a lot of the graduates actually go and do an international rotation and that looks like it's becoming more and more part of the scheme. Um, so there's people in Dubai and South Africa and America, Canada and all sorts of places, which is quite cool. So I don't want to promise it you, but I would say there is an opportunity to do that kind of thing. And mm. I think it, how, how proactive you are when you're here and who you speak to and make the networks to be able to unlock those types of doors. Yeah, perfect. Just gonna uh, super quick oh, go for it. Sorry. I was just going to say um, that there are definitely, I know of, and I'm speaking to several undergrads who are, often doing adventures who are normally based in West Midlands and there's one who's if they're not in America right now they are in like the next two weeks and they're there for a while so it's like these these opportunities yeah. do come to undergrads as well so mm -hmm. you never know there you go you never know and um, on that one Shrey says how do you think compute computational engineering and design can be incorporated and how does the future in this stream for mech engineers it's quite a long one. You'd be asking the wrong person if you ask me. <laughs> I'm willing to open the floor, but if not, I might be want to follow up with someone that's probably better placed in that field within JLR. I think it's going to be a pass from me. <laughs> well, people, 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 people. But, um, whoever, whoever asked if you want to reach out to me on LinkedIn or something, I can try and answer it through some contacts. Well, on that, it's always good to, if you've got an email or all that, say if there's any questions people would like to have yeah yeah things. definitely um Just so you can email you know. graduate at jaguarlandrover.com for any recruitment or whatever types of questions relating to our undergrad and grad programs there we go there oh. we go amazing yeah. <laughs> that's what i just say keep it cheers jay um right natasha says how does jlr encourage employees to stay updated with industry trends and technologies that's a good question is it? Do you want to, do, have you got any answers you want to share? Um, yeah, well, I mean, um, in terms of the way the automotive business is moving towards, it's obviously electrification. Um, mm -hmm. I know for software, there's a bunch of software that has to go in towards optimizing um, electric propulsion. And also another cool place um, or um, area that's happening is autonomous driving um, within GLR, it's ADAS. Um, so I'm doing one of my shadowings there in two weeks in one of the ADAS teams for modeling and sim. So coding the virtual environment that the the uh, virtual autonomous vehicles train in. Um, so especially in the, the automotive industry, we're very much a part of the, the way forward um, in terms of the industry as a whole. And I would say as well that we... We've obviously got, we're owned by Tata, first of all, so we have you know, partnerships with a number of other big companies like Tata Steel, mm -hmm. for example, Tata Motors. Um, mm -hmm. And we work with big companies like NVIDIA, for example, on various different initiatives within our, uh, our ambitions to be a sort of technology first company. So there's various partnerships and things that, you, uh, that we unlock and that you can work mm -hmm. with. And then from a learning perspective, obviously, there's a training program. There's ways to get insights. Um, I know, for example, obviously, this probably is an engineering-wise, but for HR, I've got kind of certain subscriptions that I can be part of. Um, I attend conferences and bits and bobs like that as well when I want to. So, there's, yeah, ways to stay up to date. Perfect. And um, to wrap us up, what is it like for the um, applications? Uh, what is the level of competition? For a placement at JLR, it's always it's always going to be competitive anywhere that you yeah. apply, and and JLR is no different because it's a pretty well known brand and it's a big company. Um, what I would say is there's a number of places on offer, so it's you're not just applying to a one role. So when you get to an assessment centre, you're not always competing with everyone there. In theory, all of you might get a place. A place. Um, but it is competitive. I think it's really important, you know, if you look through that employability hub, take some of the, the things that we've said today, really sell your motivations, your passions, your skills, and how it relates to the role. If you spend the time preparing and 
spend the time really making those applications good and, and applying to a number of places, by all means, you're more likely to succeed. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, that is perfect timing because we're just about to wrap up. So thank you everyone for joining um, and taking in what the great advice and a nice little insight into what it's like to work at JLR. Uh, thank you to the team, of course, for joining the webinar. And remember, if you do miss anything, it is recorded, so it'll be up on our channel and our YouTube within the coming days. So thank you very much for joining. And cheerio to the JLR team. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks all. Cheerio, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.